want to take a moment and thank Reverend Esther Gordon for filling in for me a couple of weeks ago. She's a tremendous instructor, and I'm grateful to the Lord for her. Amen. Amen. So I mentioned to you all um, that I'm in uh, a graduate program, a master's program. And um, it's kicking my tail. <laughs> and uh, that week I was away in Chicago for the whole week for school. Um, it's a, it's a mega church pastor's cohort, it's called. It's all of the pastors in the program, um, pastor churches of at least 2,000 people. And uh, it's, we're learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. And uh, it's a very, very wonderful opportunity. I want to thank the elders for releasing me to be able to be in the program. I appreciate their support. And I want to thank them. It's four years long. Oh, no, I can do it, but at the end of the four years, I'm talking about retiring. So I don't know what got into me to... Huh? Yeah, well, I'm just think of what I can accomplish. Well, um, I've already exceeded my expectations of what God could ever do in my life. What's beneficial about this program is that uh, what it has done is shown me a lot of the things that our church has done over the 30 years that have been the right things to do, which I'm grateful for. But all churches reach a plateau. You go up and you raise to a level that you plateau. And we are plateauing. And... Uh, we have to re-engage our members in what we ought to be passionate about. And we have to re reignite the fire. I know you didn't want two or three people to the Lord. And you feel good about that, pat yourself on the back, that that should last you till you meet Jesus. <laughs> it's time for me to pull the whip out. Y'all was clapping a few minutes ago. Right? <laughs> um, and I learned there something I'm going to teach you tonight, which is how to engage people in a process to win them to the Lord. The one thing we don't want our church to, members to be are irritants. Y'all met irritant people who just irritate you. Every other word out of their mouth, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, just they so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. Y'all right. right. ain't ever met nobody like that? Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't met that person, you might be that person. <laughs> Somebody on your row is just like that. Look up and down the row and see if you can see, figure out who it is. Don't point to them. I'm just saying, just. Um, here's a verse I want to share with you before we get into it. It's in John. Turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 15. John, chapter 15. And here's what the first two verses say. If you have a red letter back Bible, this is in red. It means Jesus is talking. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Let me stick a pen right there. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. You know what that means? If you're not bearing fruit, what good are you? 
the expectation of the Lord is that we bear fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. How many of y'all know there's some stuff in your life that needs to be pruned? Yep. But the fact that you're, one of, you're a part of him, that you're connected to him, that you're a branch from him, um, his expectation is for us to bear fruit. And because of that, he wants you to bear fruit. He prunes you. Why? That you may bear more fruit. God wants us to bear more fruit. Slide down to verse 8. And here's what verse 8 says. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Y'all missed a great spot to shout amen. Here's what that means. God don't get no glory because you say give an honor to God or because you acknowledge him. You know, you see people acknowledging the Lord all the time which is all fine and dandy, but what really gives God glory is that your life and your behavior is such that it makes other people want to follow the same God that you're following. And the problem I've discovered is that the Christians, um, their behavior and their, their actions toward people uh, is not conducive to make people want to follow Jesus. We're mean, we're nasty, cantankerous, selfish. What else? <laughs> Arrogant, <laughs> insensitive, self-righteous. Go ahead, name out some more stuff y'all is. Go ahead. <laughs> Gossipers, slanderers. We all of that. And uh, nobody wants to repeat that. So I believe God's trying to raise up a new generation of people who will have the right heart, the right mentality, the right posture, the right grace that we won't be a bad reflection of the kingdom of God. That other people will see us and want to be like us. Want to follow in our footsteps. And want to meet the same God that we're serving and that we're following. So um, what I want to share with you tonight is um, a method for us to develop a mindset or a process of evangelism so that we can help reach the lost with the gospel. A process of evangelism. How do we reach people? How do we engage them? See, see here's what I discovered. We, we don't mind winning people to Jesus as long as it doesn't require us to have to develop a relationship with them. If I can just drop the gospel on you, be on my way and go on my life, that's great. If I can just tell you about Jesus, give you a track. Leave you a Bible, give you a Bible and go on, that'll be great. But that's not the way God designed us to want to win people. And the problem is we have become content not winning people. We, we so proud of ourselves that we go to church every Sunday. We are just so proud that we are going to church, pay our tithes. Some, at least some of us pay our tithes. <laughs> we feel good about that. Um, we feel good about the fact that we're not as jacked up as we used to be. We don't go to the club as much as we used to go. <laughs> we don't drink as much as we used to drink or smoke as much as we used to smoke, or lie as, why are y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> or we don't lie as much as we, and we feel good that we're not where we used to be. We compare ourselves with where we are today to where we were 30 years ago, you know, and here we are 30 years later, and, and we just an outgrown some of the stuff we used to do. It's not that we got so saved. <laughs> okay, all right. And we 
we think that God is pleased. But Jesus said, if we are plugged into him, what glorifies God is that not just that we bear fruit, but that we bear much fruit. Isn't that what the verse said that I just read? Let me read it. Y'all didn't read it. Let me read it to y'all again. By this my Father's glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Much fruit. Look at your neighbor. Say, when the last time you won somebody to Jesus? No, that's not the right question. Ask this question. How many people have you won to Jesus? Wait for an answer. Okay, don't, don't wait no longer. It ain't going to get no better. We, gotta, we, have to, we absolutely have to engage and develop a passion in us to win people to the Lord. And what I want to do is, this is so simple. I'm going to show you today a, a, method, a, a process, really, of being evangelistic in reaching lost people. And we're going to use the word bless, B-L-E-S-S. -S. Each, each letter stands for something in the process that I want to challenge you to use to engage people. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, Winning people to the Lord requires developing relationships. I'm trying to move us away from just dropping off the track or just preaching and hollering at people and telling them they're going to hell, then turn around and go on your way. That's, that's not how God wants it done. He wants us to cultivate a relationship. Say that, cultivate a relationship. God is all about relationships. The Lord is all about relationships. So bless, B-L-E-S-S, -S, write that down the side of your page. And this is real quick. I'm going to get through it. We're going to be done. You're gonna get up. We're going to get done early today. Amen. I knew somebody would say amen. <laughs> we also need to know that people really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is a way for us to show people that we really care about them. We're concerned about them. It's just, again, not about just quoting verses to them and proving them wrong and us right. It's really about showing the love of God. And this is a process to do that. Y'all got that? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Y'all got it? Here's the first letter. It's B. Here, how do you engage person? Here's number one. Begin with prayer. Now, some of y'all thought that that meant that I want you to go over and grab their hands and go to spitting and hollering and screaming. No, begin with prayer means find out a need that they have that you can pray for for them and begin to intercede for them about it. Engage them by saying, how can I pray for you today? I'm a... Uh, the chaplain for the Wizards, and where we do the chapel, the chapel for the players before the game is one of the locker rooms in the arena. And whenever we go in there to set up for the thing, there's always one of the sportscasters in there all the time. And I didn't know how to engage him in conversation. I didn't know what to say to him. This is a big time sports person. Anybody who follows the Washington Wizards, they know his voice. He's the voice of the Washington Wizards. So I asked him one day, while he was in there getting ready and getting prepared, how can I pray for you? The man stopped what he was doing and turned to me and told me the burden that was on his heart. And every time I see him now, I ask him about that issue that he shared with me. And I tell him, I'm still praying for your situation. Amen. 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 I don't care how much money a person has. I don't care what, what level of education they have. I don't care what community they live in, what kind of car they drive. Everybody got something that they need you to pray about. Now, I'm not just telling you to just ask them about it. Do you think you could actually pray about it? <laughs> pray about it. Put it on your list. I have a, a, in my phone, I have these notes. And I have a section where I, I put people's prayer requests in there. And so when I pray, I can call it out and call out their names. Begin by showing an interest of praying for the person. How can I pray for you? Write, and write it down and actually pray for them. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Here's number two is the L, and it stands for listen to them. Give them an ear. Because, again, I asked the guy, how could I pray for him? And you would have you would have thought the way he was talking to me, he was he was on a psychiatrist's table, stretched out, telling me about his concerns about the situation that he raised with me. He gave me, and I just listened. And you know, here's what I mean when I say listen, because this is what I need to tell y'all. Because when somebody tell you about y'all about their problem, y'all feel the need to psycho psychoanalyze and give them answers. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. You know that's how you is. You feel, because you know, church people are know-it-alls. Don't know it all. That's why, that's why some people don't want to talk to you, because you talk too much. You got all the answers. Don't get no don't get no answers. Now you listen. Now you know how you can pray for them. But don't just listen. That's how you cultivate a relationship with a person. Care enough to listen. James says, God gave us. Uh, we should be swift to hear and slow to speak. Say that. Swift to hear, and slow to speak. Be slow to talk. Give an answer. Just listen. Just listen. My wife has a friend that every time she talks to her friend, she talks on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and my wife says she complains all the time. She just complains about everything. And I see my wife on the phone just rolling her head, her eyes up. <laughs> If she watching, she maybe she'll stop complaining. Because <laughs> my wife don't have a guts, guts to tell her she talk, she just complains all the time. But it's okay. <laughs> my wife's going to be the agent that God uses to help oh, move her to right. a new place in the mission in her life. Because she listens. And a lot of us could learn to do that a lot, a lot better. And the key point is, don't, don't, when they talk to you, don't come up with an answer. Because the saints be quoting scriptures, pulling out books, to, you know, just telling people stuff. We're not going to do that. We're going to listen. Look at your neighbor say, listen, listen. What do y'all think the E might be? Encourage, what else? Evangelize, what else? Engage, uh huh. Empathize, okay. Evaluate. <laughs> Was that you who said that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said educate. I know that y'all wouldn't get it. Elevate esteem, y'all got it all. Here it is. It's something you don't want to do. <laughs> There's something about eating a meal with somebody that forges a bond that nothing else in the world does. Notice it wasn't evangelize, it wasn't educate, it definitely wasn't e evaluate. <laughs> See, that's why you're not the pastor and I am the pastor. It's, it's a bonding that occurs. It's a connection over meal. It's breaking bread. It's breaking bread. When you, when you, um, have a meal with somebody, it's profound. It says something. I had it. I had um, 
a community guy, a guy in our community that I've been sharing with, and he asked me to go to lunch with him. Y'all know I'm a very important person. Yes. I ain't got time to just be shooting the breeze and going to lunch with people. People be asking me that all the time. But I went with him. On multiple occasions, I've gone to lunch with him. On multiple occasions. You know why? Because I'm seeking to win his heart. In one of the meals, he reached in his pocket and pulled out a check for $5,000 and gave it to me for our church, wow. for our church. I asked him, did he want me to take him out to lunch the next week too? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Um... I'm just, y'all know I'm joking when I say that, but I am seeking to win him. And God has given me a, a, a doorway to connect with him and talk with him and share, share truth with him. And, and here's the deal. There comes a time when you befriend a person that they might be hostile to the gospel, but if you befriend them, there'll come a time when they'll ask you for some help. They'll ask you for some direction. What should I do? That's the time you share is when they ask. What did I say? Let me say it again. You know the right time to, sh to tell them is when they ask. And when they ask, here's what you do. You serve a need that they have. Look at all of this stuff we do before you even mention Jesus. Before you mention a verse. Before you start preaching to him. And, and everybody in here has the capacity to do it with people that you love and care about that you want to see saved. You know, our problem is we don't want to engage in the relationship and build the process of time to help win them to the Lord. But that's, this is what it takes. We're going to bless them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to listen to their hearts. We're going to eat a meal with them. We're going to uh, look for an opportunity to serve a need that they have. And here's the final S right here is then we're going to share a story. Share your testimony or somebody else's testimony. That's the time to preach to them. That's the opportunity to tell them about what the Lord means to you. And what he's done for you. That's, that's the time to do that. That's the moment when they ask after you've served and cared and listened and prayed and befriended them and cultivated a relationship with them. Yeah, we're not looking for any quick overnight stories of people to get saved. We're going to cultivate relationships with them. And I want to challenge everybody in here to think of some persons that you know are unsaved that you want to see saved and ask God to give you the grace to follow the bless process. That's what I want you to do. When we live in a, we live in a country where 80% uh, of the people in this country don't go to church. 80%. It's actually a little bit more than 80%, 83 that means for every 100 people you know, uh, 83 of them are not engaged in spiritual activities. You know 100 people, 83 of them are not engaged. You know 17 that do, but you have 83 that don't. And one day soon, Jesus is coming back, and he's going to look for us to have some fruit. He's going to look, look at your neighbor and say, he's going to be looking for you to have some fruit. And you ain't got none. Go ahead, tell them. You, can, you might have one. You might have one. Maybe two. 
And there's so many people who need a relationship with God. Y'all can agree with me. Since we met Jesus, it has made a whole big difference in our life. When you got something good like that, why wouldn't you want to share it with somebody? Why wouldn't you want them to have it? And the, the main reason is we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to engage you in conversation. I'm saying to you, you, you ain't, I do want you to know Romans Road. I do want you to know that. But there's a whole lot of stuff to do before. The mistake the church has made is we have taught people how to quote scriptures. We haven't taught people how to love people. We haven't. We, 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 we didn't taught y'all the verses. Y'all know the Romans road. Y'all know. Y'all got your little badge, your little evangelism badge. To the, you know, and I'm proud of you because we asked you to do it. Yes, amen. I'm proud of you. I'm not downing you. I'm not talking bad about you. I'm glad you did it because that's what we told you to do. But I'm recognizing now that we got a lot of people who can quote a lot of scriptures, but they don't know how to love somebody. They don't know how to care for anybody. And that's what we need to be doing. Loving on people. And this blessed model, doing this blessed thing, is the way we're going to go about doing it. Start praying for them. Begin with prayer. Listen to their heart. Listen to what's going on. What do you do when you listen? You, you don't psychoanalyze them. You don't give them an answer. You just listen. Empathize with them. Just listen. Then you eat with them. And by the way, you should pay for the meal. <laughs> I think the amens only came on this side of the world. Look for an opportunity to serve them, and then you share the gospel with them. Then you share the gospel with them. Then you tell your story. Then you tell them what Jesus means to you. By that time, they already know there's something unique about you because you treated them differently than anybody else did for you. And pray for them through the whole process. Pray for them. You know, intercede for them. Just Don't just pray the first time, but put their name on your list and pray for them. All right, I'm going to take questions. I'm done. That's it. Simple thing. Bless. I wanted to be good, but I want y'all to go out and do it. That's what I want y'all to do. That's the main thing. I want you to, matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm praying that the Lord would put it on your hearts um, to be winning, to bear some fruit. Um, okay, I got some internet questions since the saints here don't have none. The people on the internet are asking questions. Okay, how do you witness to someone who says they're okay with going to hell? <laughs> Let me tell you, I've never met anybody who, who wants to go to hell. I, they're probably saying they don't believe. But when you show them the love of God, when you walk down through this process with them, it's going to show them how much God loves them. Winning people to Jesus, by the way, is not an intellectual exercise. It's not about, you know, because people, you know, they're going to ask you all kinds of crazy questions. Where did Cain get his wife from? Uh, you know, they got there all these questions that they they want to argue with you about and so forth you can give them an answer but that's not what wins hearts to the Lord it's the love of God and you love them and pray for them and do this process and be passionate the whole thing I'm trying to instill in us is to be passionate about winning people to the Lord and you, you share with them the word of God at the right time when they're ready 
will melt their hearts. That word will not go out void and turn to God void. It will come back. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You bold, courageous, only soul out of all of these hundreds of people who came up here. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for this character. Okay, so what do you do if you want to actually, you know, have a meal with someone that you've, um, that you know that God wants you to, because this person became in, fam in the family and they're very close to the person that you, uh, okay, well, I'll just be transparent slightly. Um, like it's my mom and her husband, he drinks all the time and it's very belligerent. But I know that God is bringing me to a place to forgive him for the things that he's done to me and my sister and even things that he's done to my mom. But how do you, if you take someone out to a meal, because that was, that was what was on my heart, I told my mom. I said, um, me and my husband, we want to take, take you and your husband out to eat. I haven't done it yet because if he orders a drink, he might get belligerent, he might get rude. It's just, how do you, what do you do in those type of situations? Because <laughs> it's just like, it really tugs on my heart, like a lot. So here's what I Because I don't want to lose my mom because yeah. I can't. Yeah, dad, uh, I'm going to take you out to dinner. I'm not going to pay for your drink. He's not my dad. Your he's stepdad. My, he's not my stepdad, he's my mother's husband. That's where I'm at right now, I'm just That's saying. Good. Here the problem. I'm gonna be honest. Houston, we have a problem right here. Houston. <laughs> here it is, right here, is your attitude okay. toward a sinner person. A right. sinner has no choice but to sin. Right. They don't have Jesus. Right. If I didn't have Jesus, I'd be a drunkard too. <laughs> Some of us got Jesus and we still drunkards. <laughs> No, this really, I'm, I'm glad you had the courage to come up because there's a lot of people in who have the same attitude that you have. It's not right. That's, that's the whole thing. Don't you think he picks that up? He does. Yeah, sure he does. We got to do, a, let me put you down on the surgery here, do something to your heart. See if God will take your stony heart out and give your heart of flesh to love him in spite of himself. The same way God loved you even when you didn't do the right thing. You gotta love them unconditionally. Mm -hmm. We don't love people because of what they do or don't do. We love them because God loves them and God cares about them and he wants us to help win them to the, to the Lord. Amen. And you can do that. You need to pray, Lord, help me love. And you know how you can do that? I Just, do, I fast, I pray all the time. Over that and over that ain't and over. gonna fix it, baby. <laughs> Just fasting and praying. Here's what you say. Lord, let me be the instrument that you use to show him your love. Let it come through you. Let, ask God to help you do that. Amen. And just love him. Yeah, he, I, I know he got issues. All of us do. We all got problems. But hurting people hurt people. So you have to ask God to open your heart so that you be the instrument to show him the love of God. Okay? Amen. I'm going to pray that God just beat the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, baby. Okay. That is such a genuine question. And I loved her openness about it, because that's why some of us are not winning people to the Lord, because we have held our, we've held them off at a distance. And I'm saying, we're the you're the instrument God wants to use. Say, God, make me the instrument that you use to help win that belligerent person that nobody else wants to be around and nobody else wants to talk to and nobody else likes being around. Ask God to help you be the person that wins them to Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so I joined a church like about a couple months ago. So I'm still under construction, but I'm, I'm like very excited about the church. So I've been telling all my friends, but some of them are still looking, you know, they're looking at me and they're like criticizing me. Like if, like if I don't do something right, it becomes into this big thing. Well, look at you, look at you. So if you want to invite somebody to church and you're not perfect, like how do you handle that when they come back at you? Like, well, 
why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Because like, they become very critical sometimes, and I wonder how do you handle that? Because it's really about them. Yeah, so and, be you know. becoming a Christian doesn't mean you're perfect. Right. Does not. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, um, you, just, you just gave me a good opportunity to talk about a few things because people think when they come to church that everybody in the church dots every I and cross every T. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is some of us, most of us in here don't even have an I or a T in the sentence. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't have it together. We're not right. We are, we are projects being worked on. When they, when they want to point the finger at you, say, I ain't never said I was perfect. I'm not right. I have, a, as a pastor, try to tell y'all I'm a jacked up joker. I am the president of the jacked up jokers ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody wrote me a long, old, nasty letter today. And I, and I, I'm just trying to think, you know, they want to tell me what I'm doing wrong, what I should do right. And I, I'm just like, hey, you know, you should never criticize a person until you've had to be in their shoes. So, so I have one more. So, so you, got, you got the answer to that? I mean, yeah. just, you just say to them, hey, I'm not perfect. I, yeah, I never told you I, I was. I've been telling them. I'm, just, I'm under construction. Please yeah. tell them, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Yeah, I got that from you, the under construction yeah. thing. And then um, I've just been sort of like changing, you know, since I've been coming to church. Like, if I see an attractive woman, like, I haven't been, you know, <laughs> like I used to be. So I've been inviting them to church. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to get your views on that, like, single man inviting this money. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, if they come, like, what does that look like? You know? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, well, it's real. You kept it real. It's real, real. <laughs> you know, one of the things we have to try to teach men and women, and I talk about this a lot. You haven't been here long enough to hear me talk about it but you hear me talk about this a lot because it is a problem in our culture that we evaluate people on the basis of their exterior looks. Yeah. Um, I tell the lady just because he's driving a nice car don't mean it's his. <laughs> and I tell the brothers just because she got it popping in all the right places, pow, 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 pow just because that's going on. She ain't going to be like that all the time. You, you have to start learning to love the person that's inside the body. Not, not too many people get so attracted to a, a facade, a body, exterior, and then when, you know, it starts blooming. <laughs> Now you don't love them no more. That's the wrong, that's the wrong posture. We, mature Christians, we got to mature to this point that we stop evaluating and looking and being attracted to people on the basis of their looks. Because I discovered, I know some of the prettiest women in the world are the meanest and nastiest people on the planet. Don't get, listen, don't get drawn into something, then get all up in there and realize she crazy. How do you repair a situation where you have tried to witness to someone and they did not receive you, but you care enough for that person to see them saved? How do you repair? Yeah, and you've gone through the, you know, trying to, you know, uh, apologize and, and reach out to them, but they don't respond. Yeah, you just pray for them. I mean, you know, 
uh, some people it takes years for them to get, to get their hearts right. And some people die without getting it right. So um, you still love them whether they accept Jesus or not. You still can love them. But just it doesn't always happen quickly. It's a journey. It's a process. And some people won't come. And it's okay. You know, you, you just do your part. You make sure you do your part. Yes, yes, ma'am. How you doing? Pastor, what do you do when um, I'm in a situation where on the corner where I work, there's a bench. And a there's lot a what? A bench where... A bench? A, yes. Oh, okay. It's a ice, <laughs> it's a, I, I wasn't sure what you said. I just... I, want, I wanted to be clear. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. There is an outside bench, and a lot of times gentlemen come, drink, smoke, whatever the case is. And there's a young man that comes every day and sits on the bench. So when I come out, I always speak to him. I was blessed by this because um, I've been trying to figure out how to speak to him, but I'm a female. I don't want to get it taken out of portion. Right now, he's at a place where he calls me, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and he calls me mama now. Um, we have, he has asked me for some money, and I told him, no, I can't do that because I can't see my money being smoked inside your body. Um, then one day I came out, and he did ask me to have something to eat, so I walked up to the corner, got him something to eat. Where do I how do I handle that? Because he is a male. I don't want to send the wrong message, and, but I do want to talk to him about Jesus. Right, so, so uh, we take this, the, the B-L-E-S-S -S mm -hmm. process, and figure out where you are. There might come a time where it's time to have a meal. So what you do is call your husband, Kevin, sitting right there. Say, Kev, can you take off and come and have lunch with me? I want to take this young man to lunch. And Kevin, my friend, who I grew up with, is going to take you to lunch and take the man with you to lunch okay. today. <laughs> I mean, that's what you got to do. Plan ahead. Figure out. I'm targeting this person. I'm telling y'all to target people. They're in your prayers. And you done blessed them. You done listened to them. You done prayed for them. Now, maybe it's time for a meal. No, 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 don't you, you know, I need to straighten this out here too because the sisters will be inviting brothers out for a meal or the brothers will be inviting sisters out. Yeah, we, we need to maybe try to do that a little more just, you know, with someone else. Right, to keep it, keep it on the up and ups. Especially this guy right here, we got to keep it up. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if y'all see him coming to y'all ladies saying he want to go out for lunch, see, I, I want to bring my girlfriend so-and-so with me. Um, so I have a question. I work in a negative kind of work environment, and unfortunately it's a government entity, and they don't want you speaking about religion or God, and it's very difficult to win some of those souls when I'm growing like I am now in Christ. So it's very difficult because the negativity is like pushing on me, even though I'm trying to remain positive, do the best that I can do. But the government structure does not want you to even talk about religion or anything. So how do you handle that situation? When you're at work, they pay you to work. Okay. Not evangelize. Okay. Not to have Bible study on work time. Okay. You, you pray for God to give you an opportunity outside of the work environment. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's about developing relationships with people. Okay. So that, no, I don't want y'all, you know, spending your whole workday quoting scriptures. You got your gospel music blasting. And, <laughs> I'm not telling you to do that. I am saying that you cultivate relationships with people where you can carry on and engage them outside of the work environment. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. You. okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great question. All right. Thank you all for asking me those questions. Uh, let me find out if there's anybody here tonight that wants to get saved. And 
And there's nobody else in line for me to answer any other questions. You ha no, we, I can't. You can't ask me like that. You got to come down here. I don't. You know, I know in the White House, everybody screams from where they are, but. Don't worry but, about it. But really, this question is for your wife. And I, I wanted to know how she handled when her friend, when she talks to her, and there was the constant complaint. And the person keeps calling, or you, you want to keep talking to them and you love them, but how do you say to them, listen, I, I can't hear you complain anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just trying to figure out how, how do I say that because I want to continue to talk to her. I know the person has a good heart. I believe that. But then what do I say because I can't keep talking or supping with you because I'm tired of hearing you complain, talk about people. Yes. <laughs> totally agree. Um, I don't know that I figured it, it figured figured everything out, um, but what what I do know is that my friend needs to be transformed more in the image of Christ. So I do know that, and I know that I can pray for her, but I also am learning that I have to have boundaries, and. Um, when we talk, and some people's personality, they're just very more pessimistic, like in melancholy kind of temperaments. But I know that I have boundaries. So when we talk, I'll let her say what's going on for a little while. And then I try to change the subject to a positive way to look at it. And most of the time she'll say, you know what, Trina, you're right. I, I need to look at it that way. But then sometimes she wants to keep going on and on and on and on. So that's when you've crossed the boundary. And so I just say, you know, I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye. So I, but I don't know that I've mastered it or figured it out. So I think boundaries, okay. when enough is enough. You know, and then give, give your friend time to talk to you, but always show her the word of God, the principle that she can use. And maybe she'll be like my friend and say, yeah, I didn't think of it like that. But then if she doesn't, you have a boundary. Okay. For me, it's like 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and then after that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This person is already a believer, so she needs to be discipled, would be my answer to that question. I'm talking to you all about reaching unsaved people. And here's the thing I want, I want you to pray. We're going to pray for just a moment here. We're going to stand up and pray in just a minute. I want you to pray to God, reignite the passion for evangelism and lost souls in you. That you ask God to do whatever it takes to light the fire of wanting to win not just one person, but a multiplicity of people. Matter of fact, while y'all got your notes out, go ahead and write down some names of some people that you don't need to get saved. You know they need the Lord Jesus in their life. Write, them, write those names down. And we're going to, I want you to put it on your prayer list. I want you to put those names on your prayer list that you're going to begin to pray about those people, those persons who you love, you love and care about them, and you know they need the Lord. Write their name down and say, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to make this a matter of prayer. I'm going to make it a matter of prayer. I'm going to make it a, an issue of the burden of my heart because I know the Lord Jesus wants to save them and wants to win them and wants to change them and wants to redeem them. He wants to do it. And he wants to use you to be the instrument to help make it happen. But we've lost our fire. We've lost our love. And I want to pray that God would just reignite our love to win people to Jesus. I'm praying that, that every week there's somebody you engage with that you went into the Lord. Last, a couple of Sundays ago, 
well, about a month ago, I went to the Andrews Air Force Base um, air show. And while I was there, I, I talked to a young lady who was a guard. She was a military police officer. She, she was on duty at work there. And there was a bunch of guys with me. We, we all went. And I engaged in her in a conversation. On my way back out from the show, when the show was over, she was still at her post. And I, as I talked to her, I invited her to come to visit our church. She said, you need the Lord to come. And last Sunday she came. And she came up front with two of her friends. Three more names on my list of fruit. Three more people. Because of that one person that I talked to, that's how you get much fruit. God wants us to bear much fruit. Y'all got it? Did y'all write those names down? Yes. Come on, let's stand and pray. This is our prayer for the night. Go ahead and grab a hand and let's just spend a few moments praying for these lost souls, these broken people, torn asunder, who feel unloved, unwanted. They might smile in their face. They might act like they're strong. But when it's all said and done, they're broken people. And God's called us to reach them. Go ahead, let's pray. We are praying tonight not for ourselves, not for our wants and wishes, but it is about tonight the people who we know need you. It is about our co-workers who are lost and broken. It's about our neighbors. It's about our relatives, our cousins, our uncles and aunts, our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers, our sons and daughters, that God, we want them to have a relationship with you like you have given to us. So tonight we come calling out their name before your altar. Open their eyes, God, change their hearts, snatch them out of the grip from the enemy, Lord. 
before it's everlasting too late. That is our prayer, that you save them. We call their name out. And we pray that you would empower us to be instruments to help win them. Help us to be prayer warriors for them. Help us to listen to them and eat a meal and serve a need and share the gospel and tell a story. Use us, God, to be the instrument. We want to be used for your kingdom. Help us to bear much fruit. We want to bear much fruit, Father. We don't want to just be churchgoers that just bring ourselves to church. But we want God to be passionate about winning the loss to the kingdom. So it is our prayer tonight, as we join hands together with one another, that you would light the fire and help us, Father, win many, many souls to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.